Everyone who hears my voice believes in the truth. Thank you. you Maybe see seated. Yeah, I did add an extra verse there on the end. Sorry about that if I threw you off there. Sorry, Susan, I didn't tell you I was going to do that. I didn't know I was going to do that till today. So, but I felt, felt like letting that what is truth hang out there a little bit. We live in an age where we wonder what is truth all the time. I turn on the news and I go, am I listening to the truth? I open the newspaper digitally these days and read the newspaper. What is truth? I read my friends Facebook pages and I go what is truth and we're encountered with that but on this Christ the King Sunday we as a church affirm the great truth that Jesus Christ is King he is the King and I just had a, a great experience here a couple days ago Annette and I had the privilege of going to see the musical Hamilton I don't know if anybody's seen the musical Hamilton one of my favorite parts is, of course, it's about Alexander Hamilton and the, the, the founding fathers, and it's done in sort of a rap musical style. But one of my favorite characters is when King George walks out in all his regalia, and, and, he, and he sings a song about, you'll be back. You'll be back because you love me so. And I, I'll, I'll make sure you love me so because I'll send some battalions against you to make sure that you love me so. I love that part about King George. And then he goes, da 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 It's just awesome. It's just, I just had so much fun with that. But, but that's the kind of thing that we as Americans go, yeah, we don't want any of that king business, right? We don't want any silly kings, especially not mad King Georges. We don't want that sort of business. We're suspicious about the ideas of kings. We fought a revolution to get rid of them, oust them. We're, so even today in England, I was having dinner with a Church of England priest, and fortunately he was retired. Uh, what you don't, may not know about Church of England priests is not only are they religious figures, but they are also agents of the state because you ha it is a, uh, an established church. The Church of England is the official church, uh, uh, is the official religion of the state of England. And so uh, I was having uh, dinner with him, and he was talking about all the things going on with the royal family. He says, Jerry, it's almost enough to make me become a Republican. <laughs> now, that's not, is our Republicans political, but a Republican is one who doesn't believe in a monarchy, that wants to have something completely separate, that wants to have we the people. And of course, we the people is who we are. We're Americans. So as, as one old preacher I, I knew often liked to talk about, we walk free. That's what we're all about. And in this day and time, we're all about, seems about to be about defending every scrap of liberty that we can possibly find. But when you have a king, it's not about liberty. It's about obedience to whoever that king is. It's about following that path. And all our passages today are filled with these images of kings. Out of Daniel, we get this picture of one like a human being coming on the cloud to the ancient one, to God, coming on a cloud. And there he receives kingship. He receives dominion, an everlasting kingdom. Now, by the way, when you saw, read that one like a human being, that is the translation of the New Revised Standard Version, and it doesn't do us any favors because the old translation, let me go back to my old King James, one like a son of man is the actual better translation because that was the, was the thinking of the time of Jesus. And what does Jesus often call himself? The son of man. And so Jesus is the son of man. So this is a messianic passage. And it's talking about the establishment of God's kingdom and the kingdom of the Messiah. And then our passage out of Revelation this morning, where, again, coming on the clouds, this idea of coming on the clouds appears again. And Jesus is the firstborn of the dead, the faithful witness, the ruler of the kings of the earth. And he will rule over all things. And then we get to our gospel this morning where we have a trial. Can't really call it, I wonder who's on trial here. Is it Jesus on trial or Pilate who's on trial here? 
But Pilate asks, you are a king at this. But Jesus says, my kingdom is not from this world. Or the old translation is not of this world. And he says, but he is a king. But what kind of kingdom is it? Well, when we think about kingdoms, we, of course, as Americans, don't like that phrase. But there are still parts of the world that have kingdoms, right? Our brothers and sisters across the pond, if Annette were here, Annette's from, from England. I met someone this morning from Scotland uh, that lives in Scotland right now. And, of course, some places, I've told you this before, have kingdoms. If we were over there across the pond, they have what's called the Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And so the kingdom is made up of Great Britain, that's that big island over there that includes England, Scotland, and Wales, and then the northern part of Ireland. That is the kingdom of Northern Ireland. But where is God's kingdom bounded? Is there, can we say, it's here or there? Jesus says it is not from this world, but it is a, the kingdom of heaven, as he sometimes calls it. The kingdom of heaven, but is heaven out there? No, heaven is all around us. Heaven encompasses all things. All the universe is, includes, is included in the boundaries of Jesus' kingdom. It's all part of his kingdom. So all things are there. And of course, we look around and we say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Father Jerry. If this is all part of God's kingdom, something's not right because things don't seem to be working very well, right? It seems to be a little bit messed up. Well, just because, uh, you know this, just because the government says that you should do something, does that mean people are going to do it? Absolutely not. I, ha I have absolute proof positive every morning driving on the 405. I know I talk about that all the time. Just because somebody sets a speed limit doesn't mean anybody's going to follow it, right? Because we're naturally rebellious. We want to do things our own way. Yet the kingdom of God is established. The kingdom of God covers all things, and Christ rules over all things. And yet sometimes we even think about things wrongly. For example, this is Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday is a relatively new observance in the history of Christianity. Advent, Easter, of course, has been around since the beginning, right? The, the celebration of Easter, and Advent and Christmas came in about the 4th century. But Anybody have an idea how old Christ the King Sunday is? How many, how, many, how many centuries? Less than one. Less than one. Exactly. You're exactly right, Suzanne. It only came about in 1925. That's when Christ the King was established. 1925, Pope Pius XI decided that there was rampant secularism and we needed to have an observance that celebrated Christ as king. And so he established a new observance called Christ the King and put it at the end of October. Now, what I think he was really trying to do was counteract the Lutherans and their Reformation Sunday. I think that's really what he was trying to do, saying, we got Christ the King and you got, a Ref you got Martin Luther. I think that's what was behind that whole business. But let's think about that for a moment. Let's counteract rampant secularism. Uh, how's that working out for us? I don't think it's working out too well. Dick handed me a newspaper clipping th this week uh, that said that one of the big concerns of churches, including this church, is that coming out of the pandemic, a lot of people have gotten out of the habit of going to church. And I talked about that last week, that there is a, a decline in church attendance, even as People are starting to come out of the pandemic, and I know it doesn't feel like we are, but even as we start to come back, will, that, will people start to come back to church? Now, I got to tell you good news. Over the last couple weeks, we've had a lot of visitors visiting, which is great news. So I think people will, but I think it is a challenge. Secularism is still out there, despite Pope Pius's intention. We still have that. And we're also living in difficult, difficult times. Let's face it. Right now, we're now you couldn't tell it because we're in California. It's really beautiful and sun shining right now. But, uh, but Annette woke up the other, uh, was coming home the other night, and she said, why is it so dark? And I said, because it's November, 
and the clocks changed, and so we're in the gloomy time, and it was also one of those gloomy days and everything is overcast in California, right? So we're in that time of year where everything just seems a little darker and gloomier. Plus, we're in that time of year when even liturgically everything seems a little gloomy. All our scripture readings, we tend to think of Advent as those end times kinds of things, but the end times readings start at the beginning of November. And we read all these kind of gloom and doom prophecies and things like that. And then we're just in kind of gloomy times, right? We've got political divisions, we're still wearing masks, we still have all these restrictions upon us, we're dealing with climate change, we're dealing with inflation. I mean, who wouldn't be depressed, right? We could be very gloomy about this. But here's the good news. We have a king. We have Christ as our king. And, our, and his kingdom is not something that we look at for far off. Sometimes we read these passages, for example, coming on the clouds, and we say that at the end of times, Jesus will come on the clouds. Uh, uh, here, here a couple weeks ago at our Bible study, we had a big conversation. That, that was a great conversation, Albert, about realized eschatology. And when is Jesus coming back? At the end of all times. But G, really, Jesus is always present. Yes, we affirm in our liturgy, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. But Christ continually comes to us present in the Eucharist, present in every moment that we acknowledge him as our Savior and our King. We don't need to wait for something far off. Yes, we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we don't need to wait for some distant time for that to happen. The kingdom can start right now. So how does the kingdom come? How does Christ as King establish himself in our lives? I think, first of all, that's an individual thing that we all must decide to do. When we say, when we say the creed, when we say, I believe in God the Father, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Savior, when I believe in the Holy Spirit, when we do those things, when we reaffirm our baptism, we are saying, I am making Christ mine, King. And that means that I don't live for myself. When you have a king, you don't live for yourself and for your own desires only. You live to serve the king. This is antithetical to everything human beings normally want to follow, right? Because we always want to do things our own way. Believe me, I'm very good about trying to do things my way. I like getting my way. But if I am going to be a Christian, I must say, it's not about me or what I want. It is about what the king wants and what is good for the community. Because Jesus has made us, not only saved us and made us a part of the kingdom, but he's also made us a kingdom of priests. That means that all of you, uh, okay, I'm the priest of St. Francis, right? But all of you are priests as well. Choir, did you know that you were priests as well? David, did you know you're a priest up there hiding? Oh, he's up there. He knows. He knows. He's giving me the thumbs up, right? Every, all of us are priests. Because what does a priest do? They minister unto one another. And they intercede before one another unto the throne of grace, unto our God and Father, and through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that means it's not about just what I want. It's not just about what you want. It's about what kind of people does God want us to be? And what kind of world does God want this to be? Does God want this to be a kingdom where we're constantly fighting with one another, at war with one another? I certainly don't think we want to be a church where we're at war with one another. Rather, we are called to be people who think of others first. It says it right up there. Love God, love others, and serve the world. That's what the king is calling us to do, to be those, those people which are servants of the king, ambassadors of the kingdom in this place and in this time. So let us give ourselves unto Christ our king.
acknowledging our loyalty and love to him. And as we do so, we will begin to reach out into our world and into the people, lives of the people around us to transform this place and this time to reflect the kingdom of God.